Hey guys, welcome to Ocean Chicks Films. I'm your host, Karen, and tonight on a brand new deep dive movie review, I'm gonna have a look at the Italian supernatural horror film, Beyond the Door from 1974. So I heard about this movie from my buddy Hobbs of Hobbs Horror. Um, and if you haven't checked his channel out yet, he's on YouTube, he's a powerhouse in the horror community. I'll have his channel linked below in the description box. Check him out, go give him some love, check out his content, really, really great stuff. Um, so when he suggested it uh, during this last weekend's live stream that I had, uh, we were watching The Exorcist 3. Um, he said I should watch it and I did because you know what he said it was one of those movies that really freaked him out and so I had to see it I watched it and man it's incredible it's the possession scenes are really scary in my opinion and had I watched this in in the 70s when it came out as a kid I would have been I would have lost a lot of sleep let's just say all right, so without further ado, let's have a look at what this one's all about. Beyond the Door is an Italian supernatural horror film from 1974. A pregnant woman's devil child can move furniture, open doors, and make its mother's head spin. Directed by Ovidio Asonites and Roberto de Torre, starring Juliette Mills, Gabrielle Avia, and Richard Johnson. So this film is very 70s and uh, low budget, obviously, but it's got such a gorgeous look about it. It's just incredible, the scenery, the way it's shot. Um, I absolutely fell in love with it. Uh, very, very weird and quirky and twisted. There's lots of gross parts, but like very practical effects. Um, and apparently he was telling me uh, that it was accused or, or sued for copying The Exorcist, because I guess it was around that time frame. Which is really crazy to me because, I mean, I guess there are a few parts that are kind of similar, but it's it's nothing like The Exorcist at all. It seems completely unique to me. Um, if anything, it reminded me more of maybe The Omen or Rosemary's Baby. Uh, there was even elements of Poltergeist in there too, uh, but I didn't get The Exorcist from it at all. But I mean, they did stuff like that back then, right? They were very adamant about keeping the rights to everything and worried about that kind of thing. But anyway... I guess it has uh, levitation and um, the pea soup thing and that kind of stuff, but uh, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think it really, uh, it wouldn't make me think of The Exorcist watching it anyway. So the story is about this couple named Robert and Jessica and very classic looking. Uh, Robert, I believe, is a music producer and Jessica's his wife um, or partner. And uh, they have two kids, a girl and a boy, an older girl and a younger boy. And um, both of them very bratty and uh, really mouthy. <laughs> They're swearing a lot in the film. It's actually quite funny. Um, and she's expecting a third child. That's what it's basically about. And just so you know, there'll probably be a bit of mild spoilers in this uh, review, but I won't get too much into detail and I won't give away the ending so that you can go watch it yourself because I, I hope you do watch it yourself. I might have to do a watch party of this one down the road too because I think it would be a lot of fun. Um, and the movie itself I was able to watch free on YouTube, so um, be something that a lot of people could join in and we could go through it together. It's a little bit of a slow burn, but very common for back then. Um, but when they get into it and into the, the, the woman being possessed, it's, it's pretty cool and pretty gross. So there's this man narrating at the very beginning of the story. Um, and I thought at first it was the devil, you know, talking, but it turns out to be something different. And anyways, I'm not going to get into that because I don't want to spoil the ending for you. But that itself is very classic 70s and, and pretty cool. Um, and one thing that I noticed right off the top was there's lots of red objects placed strategically throughout the film. So we have the Golden Gate Bridge, we have a red car, we have these red, um, the labels on the Campbell soup container that the little boy for some weird reason is constantly always drinking <laughs> the can of soup right out of the can through a straw. <laughs> Thinking, gross, because it would have been like cold soup. And then later down the road, we find out that it's pea soup that he's drinking all the time. So that very weird. <laughs> um, so red all throughout, all these red things throughout um, 
kind of given it that horror vibe, I suppose. Um, made me think of my set too, because I have a lot of reds going on now too, so that's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, you'll, you'll notice that when you watch, I'm sure. And when you get to the possession scene, you'll understand the whole reference to the, the canned soup that he's drinking. It kind of makes more sense then. And it's pretty gross, actually. There were a few times I had to look away because <laughs> it's disgusting. And the music is really cool throughout. It's very classic, funky uh, 70s music. And like I said, it's absolutely filmed beautifully. It's just such a gorgeous film to watch. Um, and I don't know if the sound was a slight bit off, uh, on the recording that I was watching, but it's not subtitled, um, but I wondered if maybe it was dubbed, but then at the same time, it looked like they were saying the same words in English that they were speaking, so maybe it was just kind of off in the recording that I was watching. I'm not really sure um, about that, but it, it, was, it was fine. It wasn't distracting or anything like that at all. Then the kids are super lippy through the whole thing, right? Swearing and stuff like that. Man, that flashed me back so much. It's different times back then, that's for sure, because I don't think kids nowadays, kids seem to be, from my daughter anyway, get what I get, her and her friends are much more respectful and conscientious of that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, super lippy, flashed me back, really, really funny. Added that little bit of humor to the whole thing. So anyhow, she finds out she's pregnant and there's a little bit of tension there because you know, third child, that's gonna mean like more money and that kind of thing and um, maybe not, weren't really prepared for it or ready. Um, and it gets very dark really quickly because she almost immediately, they can't figure out how she got pregnant actually. It's kind of a mystery, like she, she could be, but she didn't think she was. And she was further ahead than she thought she was. And um, really quickly it gets very dark and um, she gets sick, violently ill, and she's actually vomiting up blood in the bathroom. Um, and that's really gross. There's another red reference there, but yeah, just so gross right off the top. And then it just, it just keeps going and getting worse and worse and worse as we go. So she starts to get more and more sick and upset and angry and showing these weird personality changes. Um, so you, you quickly start to think that maybe this is the devil baby or something's wrong with this baby. Um, and then, you know, it keeps going and escalating to the point where she like levitates and she turns, they put the contacts in, she turns all like crazy looking, really scary voices and that kind of thing. Really well done for a low budget film actually. Really effective and really, really creepy, but it has that sort of um, indie film quality to it that's so nice, but just really well done. It really would have scared me back when I was a kid in the 70s. I really, really, really would have been freaked out by that. I was even a little bit freaked out now <laughs> watching it. And the more I think about it, the more I kind of want to watch it again, actually, because I'm sure I missed some parts. Um, because the, 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 the pea soup thing really kind of like, it made me turn away from the screen a few times because it's just so disgusting, so gross. Um, but what I liked was that things were unique. Um, even the levitation, I'll let you in on one little spoiler. Um, the first time she levitates, she levitates like straight up off the ground, um, not laying down. And I found that to be really scary, actually, even more scary than The Exorcist, to be honest with you. Um, really effective. I really enjoyed that, actually. Now, while this is a bit of a slow burn, like I said, common for 70s movies, right? Um, it's got a lot of the classic demonic type of things, but it's just done in a different way. I really found it refreshing and fun to watch. I'm really surprised I never saw it before because it likely would have been something that my dad would have dug up and found and watched. Um, but no, I haven't seen it before, but I, I recommend that you watch it for sure. And there are some pretty heavy topics in this one, um, namely regarding the pregnancy. I'm not gonna get into details about it. You have to watch it to find out, but I was really surprised that they put that stuff in there, um, you know, um, especially for back then too. So anyways, you have to watch it to be able to see what I'm talking about. Another thing I found really clever and talented about this film is that um, the lighting is very incredibly bright and sunny the whole way through, but it's even more so creepy than some of the films that you watch that are dark, darkly lit, um, and you can't see anything. I, I find that an incredible talent when people are able to pull that off because um, I don't know, something about it that was scary enough that because it's daylight, it's light, um, it just made me 
<laughs> even more scared, you know, like as long as you, like even if you have the lights on in your home, things could still come and get you um, and there'd be things to be afraid of. So I really, really, really found that refreshing. Probably because of my experience watching Hellraiser 2022 recently and um, that being so dark, so darkly lit the whole entire movie um, and something that kind of got to me after a while and I wish they had played a little bit more with the lighting so this movie kind of shows to me that you you could do this in light bright light and it still be really scary and there's a scene of the two kids playing in their room um, and there's all these haunted dolls and it's it's really well done very very creepy scene too um, I liked that I love when there's haunted dolls in movies I think that makes it more fun and I think that scene made me think of poltergeist um, more so than The Exorcist. I really don't understand how they were making this a, a ripoff of The Exorcist. I mean, I get the pea soup thing, but that was almost like a tongue-in-cheek kind of thing. Um, but it, it just didn't give me the same vibes. It was completely different. And I mean, exorcism is not something that, um, you know, uh, Blatty invented. <laughs> like, you know, it's just a thing. It's, it's a thing, and they used it and made a movie out of it, just like these people did. I don't know. Anyway. This movie had one of the creepiest, scariest scenes I've ever seen, I think, in my life. Uh, during the possession, this woman's possessed, um, and it's the eye scene. And that's all I'm going to say. you got to watch it to, to see what I'm talking about. But oh my god. So gross and scary. I loved it. <laughs> And there's this doctor throughout, and he's always eating these lemon drops. You remember those old-fashioned lemon drops that are in the tin can that are kind of coated in powdered sugar? My grandmother always had those. I loved those candies, actually. But he's always strategically putting them into a shape and, and eating them. And I, I don't know what that was in reference to. Um, if anyone knows, let me know in the comments below. And there's a cool line in the film that says, Evil can't create. It can only repeat. Love that. Love that. I've never heard that before. I'm sure it's from something, but um, I love that. That really made me think. And uh, I'm definitely going to research that and look into that because I, I loved that. I think it was really fitting here. There's also this cool clairvoyant lady um, and she lives in this boathouse and um, th that's kind of a neat scene too. I liked her. Um, and uh, a lot of it was fairly like predictable, the storyline, um, although they, they portrayed it in a unique way. Um, but it's still, I really enjoyed it anyway. Also, everything kind of gets explained to you in the movie as you're going along. Um, but you know what? I, I still think overall it was good. So there's no actual exorcism in the movie, but there's a plot twist ending that is unpredictable. And I liked that. So overall, I really enjoyed it. I highly recommend that you watch it. I know a lot of the community is going to love this film if you haven't seen it yet. Um, yeah, it's got it all. It's not big Hollywood budget, crazy, predictable, awful kind of junk. It's different, really, really different. So for my review, I'm gonna give it three and a half shark bites out of five because I, I recommend that you watch it. Check it out. If you have, let me know what you think. And if you haven't, go watch it and then come back and let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to chat. So thanks again, Hobbs, for recommending it. I really did like it. It's right up my alley. And um, I'm going to put it on my list to purchase because I need to have a physical copy of that one. For sure. Something that I want to rewatch again. And I expect that the Blu-ray or DVD cover is pretty cool artwork too. So go check out Hobbs Horror Channel uh, on YouTube. Uh, I'll have him linked in the description box below. Like I said, check him out. Really great videos. Um, and he's just a really cool person to be friends with. So I guess that's it, guys, for this one. Uh, please check it out. Let me know what you think. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for stopping by. I love you all, and we will see you again next time. Bye, guys.